welcome to my channel. My name is Jojo, and today I am very curious to talk about the new 2023 horror movie, The Boogeyman, which has nothing to do with the 2005 Boogeyman movie that I actually still haven't seen. Still reeling from the tragic death of their mother, a teenage girl and her younger sister find themselves plagued by a sadistic presence in their house and struggle to get their grieving father to pay attention before it's too late. So this movie, I had very low expectations for it. I didn't really look up the trailers and clips or do any type of research about it. I kind of just went into it open-minded, um, not knowing too much. Uh, I assumed it was going to have a lot of jump scares, so I didn't want to watch the trailers too much um, because I just didn't want to expect anything to come up. And now that I've seen it, I can finally say that it was okay. When horror movies come out nowadays, I usually kind of, in my mind, divide them up like, okay, this is going to be a standout film, very different, maybe it's very scary. And then the other part of me um, has classified some horror movies as, this is gonna be a general horror movie, jump scares galore, entertaining, but nothing memorable. This movie kind of fell in that second section, which again, I was already thinking it might be like that. Like I said, it has a lot of jump scares, but they were they were much more creative jump scares versus your typical, you know, looking under the bed and bam, something's in your face or turning the corner and bam, something jumps out at you. This one kind of throws some jump scares when you don't expect them or when you think it's about to be but it doesn't happen, so you know you, you let your guard come back down for a second, and then two seconds later, something jumps out. Something jumps out at you. Now, for me personally, it was hard to jump or get a little bit spooked out by the creepiness of the movie, just because I personally had some issues going on in the theater that were very distracting. What I did like about this movie was the storyline. We have two sisters who've lost their mother. Their father is going through some heartache, obviously, as well. And this movie has a bit of much more of a darker, darker tone. I actually felt bad for these characters. I actually wanted them to survive and win. Um, I didn't want to see anybody get hurt. We've been having children in horror movies and they've been getting hurt to a point where it's kind of uncomfortable to watch. There are scenes in this movie where I was also taken aback, like the very beginning of the movie, the, the introduction to the movie, I was like, okay, we're going there. This is PG-13, so I wouldn't say they go to that level like maybe Evil Dead Rise, but for PG-13, they do take it to that level, especially for the younger sister, who's played by Vivian Blair. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure she was, she played younger version of Princess Leia in Obi-Wan, the TV show. There was one scene where the girl was playing the PlayStation at night, and that was a standout scene for me. Uh, I was hooked. It just wasn't expecting the way it played out. And that was one of the, that's, that's one of the examples to where I say that they really go there, you know? Now, was it just me or was this movie extremely dark? I know it's called The Boogeyman. We're probably gonna be in dark lit bedrooms, right? Well, that's the case, but I really felt like it was extra dark to where I couldn't see anything. There's a, There might be moments where the monster pops out at you and might be a flash. I didn't see anything. All I could really see maybe were some glowing eyes and then the creepy growling voices, voice coming from the boogeyman, which was actually very good. I really appreciated the sounds of the sounds like a creature monster slash humanoid. So when something would jump out at you, didn't scare me because I, I felt like I was just listening to a growl and a jump, but watching a black blank screen. That was probably the point, or maybe my my theater, I don't know, it's just, you know, sometimes with theaters, they have like a gray tint to them where it just looks faded. So I was not impressed or faced by a monster in this movie at all until the very end when you finally get a better look at the monster and i still wasn't impressed by the monster it didn't look scary to me 
I didn't really find it that original. If I had to throw a, uh, an example of what it resembled, it kind of looked like the, um, like a Demigorgon, maybe resembles the Mind Flayer, but obviously a shorter monster, smaller version. Um, but I wasn't impressed by it. I, I it, it didn't, it didn't really impress me. I did like that instead of having a supernatural boogeyman to where he just jumps in and out of shots, he's like a ghost. Eventually I realized that this boogeyman is a monster and there are ways to get around him. There were rules in this movie versus just doing whatever you wanted and, the, and our characters never being able to escape. But we had something res that resembled maybe like Darkness Falls or Lights Out where being around light protects you, but there was ways where you could absolutely get the monster and, and, and try to try to hurt him. I liked that it was more, much more grounded. It was a physical thing that you could obtain, that you could get. That made it to where, okay, we have an end goal in this in this movie versus it just being another generic monster movie where he just comes back again at the very end. They absolutely could do more with this movie, with this franchise. I could see them making a sequel to this. I don't think it needs a sequel. Um, I think this should just probably be a standalone. If it wasn't for the noisiness of my... Uh, my theater, I feel like I would have been more invested and in, into this movie a bit more. Maybe I would have been spooked out a bit more. Um, I think for this movie, I would have rather seen it at home, the comfort of my couch, in the dark where I can focus on the movie, focus on the sounds, the visuals. That it's it's one of those movies where it's very silent. You got to watch it, and I would have much preferred it to be at home. Nowadays, it's just as hard to be in the theater without somebody making noise, especially when it comes to a horror movie where a lot of scenes are very quiet and in silence. So for this movie, I'm gonna give this a six out of ten. I definitely think you should watch it. Maybe stream it at home versus seeing it in theaters. If you absolutely want to see it in theaters, go for it. I personally would have just preferred this type of movie in a dark, quiet setting in the comfort of my home. But that's all I got for you guys today. Um, make sure you guys like this video, comment, let me know what you thought of this movie. Was there anything that actually impressed you? Maybe you thought was very original in this film? Let me know in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one.